I just hung up the phone with my manager and I was buzzing with excitement. Although I hadn't agreed to anything, I was just offered an opportunity to fight Daijiro Matsui in Tokyo, Japan. Fighting mixed martial arts in Japan was a dream come true. The fight was only 10 days away and I would have to leave in 8. And even though I'd been training, I wasn't sure if I was ready. George is a long way from Tokyo. I needed to call my brother and longtime coach at the hardcore gym, and together we would decide that this was an amazing opportunity, and that for the next week, my life would be a living hell. I had every confidence I could beat Matsui, but I also knew he was one of the toughest human beings on the planet. His record included fights against the sport's most elite fighters. Many of his fights ended by decision, so I needed to be in great shape, because it was likely this fight would go to distance. At only two five-minute rounds, I needed to be able to go hard from start to finish. My fight preparation started soon after hanging up the phone. I headed to the gym to get my butt whipped into shape at an accelerated pace. After what could only be described as the most intense week of training I had ever experienced, it was time to fly 15 hours through 14 different time zones to Japan. The fight is so long and the destination so far away that you land a full day after you take off. It wasn't until we started to disembark the plane that I met another fighter and his corner man competing on the card. We met up with a third fighter and together with a chaperone traveled by train to our hotel in Tokyo. We had a few hours to kill until nightfall so we first checked into our rooms at the hotel before heading out to see the sights and eat some food. My hotel room was a treatise in efficiency. Although I could poop, shower, and brush my teeth practically all at the same time, the bed still managed to be big enough for my 6 foot 3 frame. Complete with a desk, two chairs, and two beds, the room was cramped but cozy. So far I was impressed by how well we were being treated and how nice the accommodations were. The American contingent and I set out to walk around the city and unwind after a long flight and train ride. My first thoughts were that I was a giant. There were a lot of people on bicycles and that obesity didn't exist here as it did back in the States. The day and a half before the fight was spent taking in the sights, eating great food, and mentally preparing for the biggest challenge of my career. We left for the arena at noon on fight day. It was a short trip by taxi. The rules meeting was set at 1 p.m. with fights set to start at 4 p.m. I was used to fighting at night, so this was a pleasant change. My match against Daijiro was the main event, so I had a few hours to wait until battle. The five-star accommodations followed us to the arena as well. Pride knew how to take care of its fighters. We were provided everything we needed from food and water to a mat with a pillow to sleep on. My two new American friends fought valiantly but lost. It was my turn to take the ring and try and end the night with a victory. They, along with the third American, would corner me against Matsui. I wore my gi and a beanie to the ring and disrobed before climbing through the ropes. Daijiro soon followed after and made his way into the ring. For the next 10 minutes, we fought our butts off. I did more damage and landed more strikes, but was unable to defend my opponent's takedowns. I was surprised with how great I felt, even though I had a short time to prepare in Athens before leaving. As the bell sounded, I popped up to my feet and hugged my now mangled opponent. It was such an honor to fight him. I wasn't surprised that the unanimous decision went his way. Maybe it was the yellow card I received in the second round, or the fact that I was fighting a Japanese hero in Japan. I tried hard to finish him, but that is no easy task, as many of the greats before me knew all too well. Later, Daijiro would come find me, and via translator asked me about my training in my gym. He went on to tell me a story about how, when he had fought people in the past, they had stuck their tongue out at him and were very disrespectful. He said I did not do that, and I showed him much respect, and that made me a great fighter and a great person. He then went on to tell me that the next time I came to Japan, I must train at the famous Takata Dojo with him. That was probably the highlight of my trip. After the fights, we headed to Roppongi for some drinks and debauchery. This was our last night in Japan, and I wanted to make the most of it. Tomorrow, we would be back on a plane headed home. They say a trip like this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. That may be true, but I hope it is not. I feel that I made my impression on the people of Japan, and more importantly, the promoters of pride. I fought hard, entertained, and showed everyone all the respect they deserved. Not many people have the opportunity to fight all over the world like I have. And I long for the time when I get that call from my manager, hopefully with more than a week's notice, with a chance to go back to Japan and do it all over again.